Radio 59, WROW, first on the dial in Albany, Schenectady, and Troy. WROW temperature, 29 degrees. Radio 59 time at 5.30. And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. In a moment, Moonlight Sail by William N. Robeson. Winston gives you real flavor for its tobacco flavor. Winston's easy drawing to the flavor comes right through to you. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. A modern filter? Sure, Winston has it. But that's only the beginning of a Winston. Up front, up where it really counts, Winston packs exclusive filter blend. Light, flavorful tobaccos, Specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. Filter blend. That's why it's fun to smoke Winston. America's best-selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette good. The ancient Romans called the Mediterranean Mare Nostrum. R.C. For the past several years, I've made it my sea. Up to the point. At least there isn't a port between Gibraltar and the Suez Canal I haven't been in and out of without the knowledge of a harbor man. I was once a gob in the U.S. Navy, and the craft I skipper was once a PT boat in the U.S. Navy. Now, we can both be that. For a price. If the price is right. That's Marius, my first mate and crew. I signed him on one night in a dive in Marseille after I'd come between him and a crazy Moroccan who wanted to give him a facelift with the broken end of a wine bottle. Marius may have a rather carefree code of ethics, but I know I can count on his loyalty so long as I pay him regularly. There are the bells up on the Souquet, the old section of town. The sun is dipping toward the mountains of the Estorel. And another day is drawing to a close on the glamorous and expensive French Riviera, where the pickings have been precariously lean for the cruiser Mockingbird and its men. Bonjour, monsieur. Ah, but who knows? Maybe this is our pigeon. May I come aboard? Sure. What can I do for you? It is said that your boat is for hire. That's right. And are you free for this season? Yes. Yes, I am. Good. Then I shall engage you. For what? Oh, just a boat ride, a moonlight sail. Where? Just out and back. Why? <laughs> Monsieur, am I engaging you or are you engaging me? I like to know what I'm getting into, that's all. Oh, it is merely as I say, Monsieur, a, a moonlight sail. A, a young lady whose capitulation is a guest to not complete. Oh, I see. Well, I'm not sure the Mockingbird is very well rigged for your purpose. She looks adequate. Okay. What time? Uh, say, 8 o'clock. You know the Villa Mouette on Catonquib? The big place out by Eden Rock, that rich American dame list for the summer? You see, sir. I'll be there. Oh, uh, one thing more, monsieur. Yes? How much? How long is it going to take you? Oh, who knows? Two hours? Three hours? One cannot put a time limit on these matters. Oh, yeah, I know. Say 10,000 francs for the evening. Agreed, monsieur. At uh, 8 o'clock, then. At 8 o'clock. Uh, Steve, Steve, I do not like you. But, my friend, a buck is a buck. Or, as we say in France, 400 francs is 400 francs. Make fast that bow line, Marius. I have it, mon capitaine. Well, monsieur le capitaine, you're right on time. Part of our service, monsieur. Say, you never told me your name. Oh, forgive me. It is effroyer. Jacques Effroyer. And this is Mademoiselle Adèle. I'm well, glad to have you aboard, Miss Adèle. Thank you, Captain. Any special place you wanted to go, Monsieur Effroyer? Uh, yes. Uh, head her straight south. South? Yes. To Africa. 
I was beginning to dislike this puny little Frenchman with the shifty eyes, but I didn't give him any argument. He was paying for the evening, and if he wanted to ride toward Africa, I'd head south for a little while. The girl sat huddled on one side of the foredeck, her back turned to the Frenchman, and he leaned against the rail, watching her, tense, like a black cat ready to pounce. Then, for a moment, he averted his gaze as he turned into the wind to light a cigarette. Adele leaped to her feet, ran a stern, and clambered into the wheelhouse. Captain, where's the doctor? Is he all right? Chuck, who's Chuck? My fiancé. Is he badly hurt? I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about, lady. Yeah, you must not let yourself get to upset. But I've got to know, and you won't tell me anything. You will know everything in good time. And anyway, the capitaine knows nothing. Now, now, come along with me. But this is... I say, come with me. We are nearing our destination. With a yank that nearly pulled her arm from his socket, he hauled Adele out of the wheelhouse and back forward. Marius looked at me and shrugged. It's a la vie. You know what I think, Steve? Not until you tell me. This fellow is not in love with this girl. No. Yes. Well, what are you going to do? Yes, but who is this chap who is so badly hurt? And what is this destination this fellow said we were approaching? Who knows? It's his boat ride. He paid for it. Yes, but Steve, I'd like to... Help! Help what the... Steve, look. He's pushing her over. Help! I made it to the foredeck just in time to grab the struggling girl before she went over the side. She was too shaken to speak, but the Frenchman wasn't tongue-tied. Oh, thank you, Captain. Thank you. She was trying to throw herself overboard. I struggled to prevent her, but she was too strong for me. If it had not been for you... Say that I saw how it happened. Oh, get out to the wheelhouse. I want you where I can keep my eye on you. Both of you. Thank you, sir. He's trying to push me overboard. I know. Marius? Swimmer, Captain. Swing her around. We're going in. The street, Lord Captain. All ahead, flank. All ahead, flank. The sooner I drop this cargo, the happier I'll be. Nobody said anything for the next few minutes. The girl was too shaken to talk, and the Frenchman was figuring his next move. Marius held the wheel, driving the mockingbird across the moon drenched water at top speed. And I stood by to prevent further mayhem. Captain, I feel I owe you an explanation. You don't owe me anything but 10,000 francs for the evening's outing. Oh, that? Uh, Here you are. Thank you. Uh, Nevertheless, I feel I must explain. You see, my wife... Your uh, wife? What kind of a story is that? Now, Adele, my dear. And I am not your dear. Captain, I I hardly know this man. He's a friend of Mrs. Dawson, my fiancé's mother. Mrs. Dawson received word this evening that Chuck had been hurt skin diving over on St. Margaret Island. He was asking for me. Well, this man was a guest for dinner. He offered to get a boat and take me to Chuck, but but he tried to drown me. He tried to push me overboard. You saw it yourself, Captain. Now, look, I don't want to get mixed up in this. You've had your ride, and now the party's over. I'll take the wheel, Marius. We move, Captain. Stand by to make fast the bow, Painter. We move, Captain. Our oh, prints are fast, Mon Capitaine. Very well. You first, Monsieur Foyer. Uh, so, I was beginning to worry. Who's that? Mrs. Dawson, my fiancé's mother. Did everything go off? Adele, what are you doing here? Didn't you expect to see me come back? Well, yes. I, I, I mean, no. I, I thought you'd be with Chuck. Well, we never went near the island. Your friend, Monsieur Foyer, tried to drown me. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You must be mistaken, my dear. Well, anyway, I have good news. They phoned me from the island. Chuck is perfectly all right, and they're bringing him home. Oh, thank God. When will he get here? Well, later. And maybe not until morning. So come along, my dear. You look terribly tired. Oh, I am. And then you go straight away to bed. I'll call you the moment Chuck gets home. You see, Capitaine, it is necessary to humor her fantasies. Otherwise... She becomes quite violent. Yeah. Cast off, Marius. Let's get out of this joint. We headed back to town, taking a bearing on the white frosted walls of the Palm Beach Casino. But I couldn't get that girl out of my mind. She didn't sound crazy. She didn't act crazy. 
And there was no doubt about it, the Frenchman had been pushing her over the side. And the woman, Mrs. Dawson, whoever she was, seemed not only surprised but furious to see the girl. I knew it was none of my business, but that's the way I am. Back to Cap Donkey. We crept into a quiet cove a quarter mile east of the villa. And I left Marius at anchor watch and made my way back to the house along the silent, moon-dappled road. It was a big villa, surrounded by formal gardens, a rambling Mediterranean house dominated by a round watchtower which looked out to sea. There were no lights on the landward side, so I made my way through the shadows toward the water and soon heard the low buzz of voices. There they were, Mrs. Dawson and Jacques standing on the terrace which faced the sea. You were highly recommended. There I was. Not six feet away from them, Heaven knows hidden behind an acacia bush. All that you say is true, madame. Well, then perhaps you can explain your failure. All would have gone well had it not been for that American boat captain. Oh, excuse, excuse me. What could I do? He heard her scream. You shouldn't have permitted her to scream. Madame Dawson, have you ever killed anyone? Of course not. Then you are in no position to criticize me. That girl must not marry my son. I understand that. Tonight. You said you'd do it tonight. Hi, but... Well, there is still time. Perhaps over in Monte Carlo at the casino. The way that boy loves roulette, he won't be home until three or four o'clock in the morning. You still have time. But here in the villa, this is a different matter than a drowning at sea. You're a most uninventive assassin, monsieur. Madame? Look. Her bedroom in the tower. You see that balcony up there? Yes? That's her room. The only one in the tower that's occupied. And look beneath the balcony. A sheer drop of nearly a hundred feet to the rocks below. In the morning, her body will be found on the rock. An unfortunate exit. I see, madame. And may I say one thing? Yes, sir. You should be in my line of work. You would do well. silently to the road. As I ran back to the Mockingbird, I worked out a rough plan for the rescue of the fair maiden from her dungeon tower. The light in the tower room was still on. Marius eased the Mockingbird toward the base of the tower until its prow crunched into the sand between a couple of rocks. You are going to climb that steep? Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, Marius. Up that bank of the terrace, then up those vines if they're strong enough, and onto the roof. After all, that tower was never designed to repel invaders. It was built to look old and quaint and you see those stones sticking out of the stucco every now and again? Yes. They look close enough to be useful as a ladder. All right, give me the coil of rope. There you are. And you know what you have to do down here. I know. Uh-oh, the light just went out. i got to get moving. Oh, sure, Steve. Yeah. Well, thanks. The first part of the climb was a cinch. The vines were old and sturdy, but the uh, whimsical architect who embedded those picturesque stones in the tower had never intended them to serve as a ladder. A couple of times I was sure that they would find my body along with Adele on the rocks in the morning. But I finally made the balcony, scratched, bleeding, and scared. But not half as scared as Adele. Who's there? Who is it? Steve. What? What are you doing? Shh, don't talk. Just listen. We haven't got much time. But, Listen what? to me. Chuck is all right. Oh, thank God. He isn't hurt. He's at the casino at Monte Carlo right now. Why, then? You he... were right about the Frenchman. He tried to drown you. In just a minute, he'll try to push you off the balcony. But why? Mama doesn't want any little girl playing around her little boy. We've got to get you out of here, and there's only one way over the balcony. Come on. Oh, but I can't. There's no time to get pretty up. Just come as you are. Come on. <laughs> got out of bed and came out to the balcony with me. I dropped the light line that I'd carried up with me. Marius fastened it to a coil of three-quarter inch manila, which I pulled up and looped over the railing of the balcony. Then I tied a French bowline on the end to make an improvised bosun seat, and Adele stepped into it. I helped her over the edge of the railing, waved to Marius, and he began to lower the terrified girl to the rocks. As she disappeared from sight, I heard the door of the room open softly behind me. 
I turned as the Frenchman quietly entered and tiptoed over to the bed. Again? Your pigeon's flown the two foot here. You, what? you ought to thank me. This is the second time tonight I've kept you from committing murder. With this expression of disapproval, he went for me. I crouched, ready to flip him across the room with my best judo. But this Frenchman fought with his feet. It was I who flipped. In just a moment, we will return for the concluding act of... Welcome, recording star Mel Torme. It's terrible trying to sing with a bad cold. So I always take four-way cold tablets to relieve cold misery fast. Good idea. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When you catch cold, try my way. Take four-way cold tablets. A fast way to relieve cold distress and feel better quickly. Four-way, only 29 cents. Our program will continue in a moment after a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, unsightly dandruff gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch, dandruff remover shampoo. I was out. Not long, but long enough for him to get out on the balcony and take in Adele's improvised elevator. I shook my head groggily to see him hacking away at the rope with a pocket knife. I jumped him, yanked him away from the rope. He leaped to his feet and came at me with a knife, pushing me back against the railing. I fought off the knife hand, but it came closer and closer to my throat. And then he lost his balance, just a fraction. And just enough for me to use judo. And he flipped over the balcony and down. Down to the rock below. I clambered over the railing and went down the rope, hand over hand. Adele stood trembling, staring at the silent heat that was the Frenchman's body. Come on, Adele. We've got to get out of here. It could have been me. It could have been me. That's right. <laughs> Give me a hand getting her aboard, Mary. <laughs> Come along, Adele. Easy now. All right. There. There we are. You just lay back and rest. Who's down there? What's going on down there? Uh-oh. I was afraid she'd hear that scream. Fire her up, Marius. We move, Captain. Stop or I'll shoot. All ahead, flank, Marius. All ahead, flank, on Captain. No wonder she hired the Frenchman to do her killing for her. She can't shoot for sour apples. We got out beyond the three mile limit as fast as the mockingbird would go, which is plenty. Then we headed east toward Monte Carlo. The lights of the Boulevard des Anglais twinkled like a jeweled necklace along the waterfront of Nice. But we were safe out here. In case Mrs. Dawson had alerted the Niçois Harbor Patrol to intercept us, Villefranche slipped astern in the dark bulk of Cape Ferrat, and then the little town of Beaulieu. At last, we rounded Cape Dye, and there ahead rose the white facade of Monte Carlo, quivering with light. And we slipped into the territorial waters of Monaco, safe from the French authorities. Well, can I drop the anchor, Steve? We haven't got time. Tie up at the customs pier. The customs? Sure, we're not carrying contraband this time. You don't have to smuggle as pretty a girl as Adele into Monaco. We tied up at the customs dock under the astonished gaze of the guard who had emerged from his red and white striped sentry box. Uh, pardon, monsieur. Uh, you have a landing for me? Not yet. We're in a hurry. Uh, but it is your fire. Yeah, I, I know, I know. I'll be back. Meanwhile, you guard my boat, huh? 
Uh, you see, we're refugees from France. Oh? An affair d'amour. Oh, well, in that case, what's it, monsieur? What's it? our way to the terrace of the casino and stood outside looking through the windows of the Salon Privé. It was crowded as usual with beautifully gowned women and men in evening dress intent upon the roulette and baccarat and chemin de fer. Adele peered anxiously trying to find her boy in the crowd. There's so many people I can't find. Them. Well, then let's go in. Like this? With your peacoat over my nightdress? And in bare feet? Oh, start a new fashion. Oh, no, I mean it. <laughs> but my hair is such a mess. <laughs> oh, well, in that case. Oh, there he is. Huh? I see him. Where? Oh, over there by the big roulette table. The tall blonde? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll go get him. Keep an eye on her, Marius. Why, yes, I'm keen, Steve. We did not bring her this far to let her get away, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur, Madame. Voilà, Monsieur, Monsieur, Madame. Your name's Chuck Dawson? Yeah. Why? Someone wants to see you outside on the terrace. Oh, oh. surprise. <laughs> what is it? Come along. Hey, wait a minute. I got a lot riding on 17 red. Got a lot more riding out on the terrace, Adele. What? Come on. Is that rouge? Monsieur. Monsieur Dauphin. Put that way. Okay, I gave it. Hey, Adele. Oh, Chuck. Chuck, I, I, I never thought I'd see you again. Well, well, what is this? What's this all about? Well, there'll be plenty of time for explanations later. The important thing is, do you want to marry this girl? Of course I do. Well, then, I suggest you do it right away. And in Monte Carlo where the authorities take a dim view of murdering mothers-in-law and kidnapping skippers. Suspense. You've been listening to Moonlight Sale, written for suspense by William N. Robeson. In a moment, the names of our players and a word about next week's story of suspense. Are you out of tune due to irregularity? Then help yourself get back in tune with Kellogg's All Brand. Pleasant, isn't it? The feeling of well-being you get when constipation from lack of bulk is no longer a worry when harsh, irritating drug laxatives can be thrown away. Because Kellogg's All Bran is the normal, natural way to regularity. Its whole brand content gentles away constipation, supplies your system with the bulk-forming food you need for useful regularity. And it tastes good, too. Fact is, Kellogg's All Bran is the one and only whole brand cereal that combines proved effectiveness with appetizing taste and crispness. So if you're out of tune, Help yourself get back in tune, as millions do, with Kellogg's All Bran. A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Bran. Third in tonight's story were Frank Thomas Jr. as B. Louis Van Ruten as Jacques, Joan Laser as Adele, and Ethel Owen as Mrs. Dawson. Others included Jack Manning, Jim Bowles, Sam Raskin, and Guy Rett. A sober word about this holiday season. Keep in mind, all through the holiday season, highways are dangers. Slow, steady, and sober will see you safely through. And listen again next week when we return with Zero Hour. Ray Bradbury's chilling story of the day the children take over the world. Another tale, well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. On CBS Radio. <laughs>